G'day, Harry Houdini here from Australia, and we're back with part three of the Panzer II. Yes, now look how she's coming along. We have got a nice coat of Dunkelra. I probably didn't say that right. Sorry to any German people. You can let me know how to pronunciate that correctly. I have an Australian accent. It's like Dunkelra. Anyhow, it feels great. I've got a nice little uh, coat of paint on there, and I'm pretty happy with that. I'll end up um, painting the uh, the wheels and the undercarriage that same colour and then redoing my Panzer um, blue uh, wash later. But um, I'm happy with that colour. It took me a while to be about three different goes until I found a, a grey that actually worked for me. And you'll notice we've got a set of tracks on this side. Yes, now that was easy. And why was that easy? Oh, look. Because they're magic tracks. It's one thing I like about Dragon. These tracks are so easy. Now they they come in little individual links already separated for you, and they're pretty cleaned up. So you know you don't have much work to do, and you can pretty well go straight from the packet and collect them together and put them on the tank. They are magic. So um, all you're going to need to do this is some tweezers, your glue a rule and some tape. Now double sided tape would be great but what I've done is I've just used my Tamiya tape, the Tamiya yellow low tack tape and I've placed it on here and just rolled it off one little edge. I've folded back just a tiny bit of the edge there and then the other side to stop it flapping is where I've put the rule down and the weight of the rule holds that in place and that leaves me a nice little glue strip here that's just wide enough for just about any tank tracks actually. And these are only tiny, this is a Panzer II for goodness sake. So it's just a wee little thing. Apologies to all the Scottish people. Now, uh, a Panzer II only runs to about 27 centimetres, about 10, 11 inches. That's all I'm going to need. So a foot roll is fine. My Panzer IV when I did it, it ran a little bit longer than that. You needed just over a foot or about 35, 40 centimetres. But you could shuffle your um, rule along once you've sort of got them in place. Anyhow, how do we do it? Well, let's count out 99 little track links and get started. Now I've counted out my 99 track links and rejected a few that were damaged. You always get a few that are kind of a bit uh, squished or not formed right and this is why I find it's best to go through the links before you start. Nothing worse than building it and then find you just put in a a damaged link, you might even miss it as you're putting them down and then you've got a god-awful mess when you try and uh, wrap it around the wheels and, and proceed later on. So I go through the links, just spend that little extra 10 minutes and put them in piles of 10 so that I know I've got exactly the amount I need and I needed 99. So let's get started. Well, one thing to check. Now, can you see the track links? Now, they have a direction that they go. You usually find either side of the tank has different links and the instructions will tell you that. Make sure you put the left side on the left side, right side on the right side. Now also, they point in a certain direction. I don't know how close we can go. Huh? You might see the outside triangles, those little holes, they point up, but the inside one points down. Okay, now that's how they are on this Panzer too. So you'll need to check that on whatever tank that you're building. Usually the instructions will be right, but you know what dragons like, you never know. So it's best to look at photographs and quite and you know you'll find plenty of World War II photographs that will give you a close-up of the track links and you can see which way they should point. And as I say, these ones should have the outside holes, triangles pointing up but the inside little triangle points down, at least the front of the tank. So literally it'll fall down and as it, as it moves along. Okay, magic track links. Now here's my first link, and I've worked out which way they've got a point, and so I know I can start with them 
on this side pointing that way. And that just helps me. I mean, really, you're going to peel them off anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. But I find if you've got the links in the right direction, you've got your model sitting there beside you, same direction, you're all organised. When it comes to actually assembling the uh, glued links onto the tank, which really is a tricky moment because you need to work quickly and you need to get it right first time, then you don't have to worry about, oh no, I've got them on back to front. So you've got that all figured out. Anyhow, first link goes down, all right, on the double side tape, so it's not going to move. It's nice and nicely uh, attached there. And then the next link just clicks straight in. Your tweezers, click. Easy as that. And on we go. And the beauty is, having the tape there and the rule, you can't really go wrong. Well, in they go. And the tweezers are a great way to um, make sure they actually go in right. I'm putting on my extra strong reading glasses now. Oh, now I can see what I'm doing. So again, another link goes in. I um, can't get much closer, but I'll do some photographs. So the link goes in, and they literally click, and you know you're right. And you know, you know they're all clicking together beautifully, and they're not going to move. Okay? And you're pushing against the rule, which means you know they're lining up. All right, and links usually sort of have little um, recesses in them. There's, they're sort of joined along a central section where, well not central section, they're joined up with a tube at either end, which has a rod through it. Uh, every link's pretty well like that. that, that's the principle of links, it's two plates together like that, they've got to be joined with a sort of an overlapping type hinge with a rod through it. So that's the point that we actually, we're joining them. And therefore there usually is a nice little couple of gaps where you can get your tweezers in which allows you to shunt them up. So as you go, make sure they're nice and tight, click them in. Now I'm picking them up with a guide horn here each time, that's the beauty of the tweezers is use the guide horn to get them roughly in place and then tweezers down so that that hinge is joined and then back in the holes at the rear which exist on every hinge or just about every hinge. The BD7 didn't have a lot of holes, that kind of were they just had like interlocking fingers. And if you watch that video, you know how much fun I had with the BT7 tracks. But they were link and length, and they they linked, but they didn't length. Go and watch that one. You'll see me just about uh, have a swear word or two or three. Well, I did off camera, I tell you. Anyhow, you don't need me to show you every link going in. So we might do a little comical speed it up version here. I'll get all the links clicked together. It'll only take me half an hour. For you, mere seconds. So, enjoy. And here we go with those track links. Now, I did promise last time to sing Walsing Matilda. So, maybe this is my opportunity. <coughs> Clean the pipes out. Get organised while you're watching this very boring bit of all these track links coming in. And, oh no. Oh, we're running out of time. Oh, oh, I have to leave it till next time. Sorry, we'll sing it then. Okay, bye. And we're down to the last few. And it's only taken me a little over 20 minutes this time. But I did uh, have all that pre-preparation. And that's um, that's vitally important. So that, that's your 30 minutes. So, you know, count your tracks out. Make sure you're, you're going the right way. And here we go. Lucky last. That's it. So, there you go. So once you've got them all in, and as I went along I'm pushing down, I'm you know clicking them in, sure, but then I'm just making sure they are, the ones at the back haven't come loose, and you can give them a bit of a, a push down. Now they, they don't move. They're, that's the beauty of this tape and this system. Uh, the rule's holding them in place, so you can push up against the rule to basically make sure they're they're nicely aligned. You can run your fingers over them. I even sometimes get the tweezers and very carefully run it down the centre. Just make sure there aren't any bumping up. But there are. They're all, you can even eyeball it and I can see they're all nicely stuck to the tape. So that means they're flat and they're all clipped in as, um, as well as they can be. Except for this little one here. He's popped out. And I just click him back in. So there you go. It's probably because I was showing off with the uh, 
the tweezers. But you can see, you can eyeball it and you can see if, you know, oh, that one's just standing a tiny bit proud. So you can just click him in. And that's it. Easy as that. And basically, that's all looking very good. Yep, that's fine now. So, 99 links. Done in about 20 minutes with about 10 minutes prep. Just make sure you're right. Okay, now all you have to do, and this is so easy. Got your glue, start at one end, and on that joint, and only on that joint, put the tiniest bit of glue. In fact, you'll find there's just a couple little spots really where the glue goes. You don't have to put it around everywhere. I mean, sometimes you've only got one guide horn on some track links, so you know, you only want to put the glue in discrete spots. But here, as I said, because it's like a hinge, there's two little points. The points you'd probably oil in a normal hinge at home. Well, that is where I'm gluing. So just a little dab will do ya. And this is the inside as well. This is going to be hidden by the wheels. The road wheels and sprockets are going to hide most of this. So, you know, you can get away with the multitude of sins here. Um, that's, that's the beauty of this method. We glue the outside, it'd be a bit more obvious because that's where you're going to see them at the ends or underneath the fenders or if you happen to pick up the tank and you're looking underneath at the tracks. But the beauty of putting the glue on here, very carefully, and it's kind of running out of this thing a little bit faster than I can move, but that's all right. And if it drips through, it's only going to go onto the tape and that really doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't affect this at all. Okay. Easy as that. So, links in order, right direction, all lined up on my tape. And now I allow about 5-10 minutes, cup of time, just enough time to boil the billy, get that uh, cup of tea going. Yes, we are Australian. And I'll let you have a little break of a few seconds <laughs> while I go away and have a nice cup of tea and uh, talk to my koala bears and then we'll be back to wrap them around the wheels and it's really very easy. I've had my cup of tea and now we are ready to wrap those tracks around these wheels. Now you'll notice I have taken the um, upper hull off. Now you don't need to do that but I just found it easier because then I can really get them round um, a lot quicker and I don't have sort of fenders in the way to, to, to get to bother me. I will have to then um, basically you get the fenders back on. I'll have to put the top bar back on once I've got the tracks in place to adjust the sag. But I'll show you that in a sec. First off, we need to move this out of the way so I don't wreck it. Okay, so getting the tracks off. We need a pencil. We need a pencil. We're not organised. Too much having a cup of tea. Okay. So your track links, using your tweezers, start at one end and you can get underneath them and work them off. This is the way that I use. Now I then put a pencil behind because I found you get these little suckers off and then they fall back down and stick on the double sided tape, which is really problematic because then you've got to unstick them again. So here we go, as you can see. They're curving all by their own little lonesome because they are ready to shape into any kind of wiggly pattern we want. They've been gluing for about 10-15 minutes. So they're, they're set together, which is good. We don't want them pulling apart while we do this. But there's a bit of flexibility because that glue is still fairly um, elastic. Alright, so the tracks are essentially a loose. And again, I've made sure we're all going in the right direction. Now, what I like to do is pick a point where I'm going to join them. And usually, for me, that best point is underneath. Sort of maybe in the middle, underneath one of the, um, the wheels. So let's, let's do that. So I'll, I'll pick that point. Here we go. Sit them down there. Now, I hope you can see all of this. So there we are, a little bit closer. You can see what's going on. So... I've picked that point, I've got my links, now the beauty is my sprockets are not fixed hard in place, none of my wheels are, they're only glued on with some 
um, white glue. So I can rotate these and get just the kind of uh, sag or uh, adjustment that I need. Okay, so there you go. We're pretty well in place and then the all important join is what we're looking for. So the beauty is they can that can rotate that um, that drive wheel because you've got to get the links, the little guide horns in the holes. There's no choice there. So you'll need to have a little bit of play. That's why I don't really hard glue on my um, my wheels. They're all loose. They're they're just tacked on with the tiniest bit. Everything's falling off. The tiniest bit of white glue. Okay, so. Here we go, here's our join. So, we'll probably turn it over and we can see that. So we know those two have got to join together. So, this is where we've got to sort of do a bit of reverse engineering. And we'll need a little bit of glue. And I know they're not painted. And, oh dear, what are we going to do? Don't worry about that. Oh, there's method to my madness. So the last two, I'm going to just hold them, hand hold those two together until they tack. Which only take a few seconds. And so we've got lots of elasticity at this point. These these links will, even though they are they're, they're glued together, but they they have a bit of play, and that's the beauty of it. Okay, so they're that's holding. You've got to be gentle though. So, with that holding, with that pressed down, I now will be able to set the sag. So to do that, to set that sag, I will need the top back on. Okay, so, links are in, they're wrapped around, they're sitting nicely in the sprockets. I hope they are. I can't quite see because I've got this so close I can't see in the camera but I can see with my eyes. So yep, that's not looking too bad. So now the thing is we want to get some sag. Okay, so there's always a little bit of sag and you can do that with some people call them Q-tips, I call them cotton buds or any kind of little spacing material. So I found with this Panzer II because basically there's not a lot of space in there. I um, found in my uh, my box of odds and ends. I've got these. Um, these these are for painting. You put them in a in a pegboard, and then you paint. I'm just moving quickly here because you really need to get this. You need to get this right. What's happening there? Oh, that finger isn't clicking down. That's why. So it's a bit fiddly. But I mean, you've got the tracks together and they're all glued and you've got, you really do have, you have a bit of time to play. Okay, so you want to get, you want to get that sag happening. So. Beauty of having my wheel that I can turn. I can check that I've got all those links into those sprockets. So it's just, you've got to be a little bit fiddly at this point, a little bit faffy, but you can do it. Okay, so, bottom links, they're all just sitting on. I mean, these, it's not much to this, it's just a tiny little tank. So there we go, that's basically it. Probably off camera now. So that's, that's what we need to do. Okay, now I'm going to um, switch off the camera and just adjust that, um, so that I can see what I'm doing, because while I've got it set up here so you guys can see what you're doing, um, I haven't quite got the sight lines I need. But you get the idea. It's not that hard. You, you've just got to have your wits about you. You've got to know where you're going. That's why it's good to plan ahead. Make sure the track links are put in the right direction so you don't put these on and go, oh no, they're back to front, and then have to rip them off. That would be an absolute disaster. Because they'll only take so much fiddling. They are semi-glued together. You've allowed that 10 minutes, which means they're pretty well holding. But they will rip apart. If you're too heavy-handed, they will. And that's where a lot of people get all upset because, you know, it all starts falling apart. Um, but look, if you stick them to the tape, glue, wait that 10-15 minutes, 
wrap them around, have a plan. I plan to join them there under that wheel, so that's where that one's joined. And now for them to set, I'll sit it down so that basically the bottom rung of track links, they're going to get nice and flat, which is what you want. And in fact, you get a bit of natural sag happening because the kind of gravity will, will take over to a certain point. But just having the little Q-tips or some rods, or some people even roll up some aluminium foil and shove it in there, just need some little spaces and try and get the sag that you want. Because on the other side, you'll um, you'll see I I got uh, I got a level of sag happening. It's only little, it's only subtle, but it's what I wanted. Well, there you go, all my Q-tips or cotton buds and my little spacer rods that I use, they're all in and they're holding that sag. Now you may notice I've got a lot, couple of plastic cups here. I've found, by trial and error and by making mistakes, um, you put your little spacers in, you go away and of course the spacers are going to sag and then your tracks, yeah, they've got sag, but the tracks end up at wonky angles. So one good little trick is to um, have something that's about the same height as the um, the rods that you're putting into space, or the little um, you know, Q-tips, and use those to prop up the spaces so they are going to be horizontal. And that way the tracks are going to sag horizontal in their waviness, and um, it'll all come out. I hope that makes some sense. Otherwise you end up with kind of bent tracks, which you don't really, you don't notice until yes, you get up close, especially once you start taking those photos and display them online on the, the boob tube, you know, face page thing, and then people go, hey, hang on, your tracks are all wonky, mate. You bugger that up, and you'll be a drongo. We've talked about drongos before, if you've watched any of my other videos. Don't want to be a drongo. Anyhow, uh, I need to allow, oh, an hour or two for those to set. I really have to leave them alone and and don't touch them. So I hope that was useful for you to see how I put the tracks together. Very simple method. Have the rule, the tape, be organized, plan ahead, click all your links in. That's, that becomes really easy. That's the part everyone thinks hard. It's not. Clicking the links in is the easiest bit. Glue on the inside. Allow that 10-15 minutes so they really are quite well glued together. And then because you've planned ahead you know you can bring your tank over Put your tracks around the wheels. Your wheels are only semi-glued on or tacked on with um, white glue, not not um, plastic cement. Um, and that gives you the ability to adjust the sprocket wheels to fit into the tracks and adjust everything to get it how you want. And then all you've got to do is put your little spaces in, sit it uh, quietly for a while with your spaces sitting horizontal, and it should turn out fine. Now the other terrific thing about this method is I'm not going to paint those wheels or those tracks on there. When this is dry I can remove all this paraphernalia and because those wheels are only tacked in with a bit of white glue I can just tap them with my tweezers and the wheels will pop off, the tracks will all come off all in one piece and I can even click the wheels out of the track links because they'll fall out between the guide horns and then I can paint and weather my tracks individually and paint my wheels up, do whatever I want, and I can paint my body and do all the effects I want to do very easily. More of that next time. The dog's barking. Obviously it's hungry. I've got to go feed the dog. Um, I'll see you next time. Huru from Down Under. Goodbye from Harry Houdini.